Well, we are almost two years into the 2020s, and to celebrate a new year, we thought we'd take a look back at the other roaring 20s back in 1920, uh, turning our clocks back 100 years to see how some of the New York Stock Exchange's oldest residents are stacking up after a century. And today, Yahoo Finance's chart master, Jared Blickery, is jumping in the driver's seat with the company that's credited with kicking off the roaring 20s bull market, and that would be General Motors, Jared. That's right. We did General Electric yesterday, so why not General Motors today? And let's take a look at the Wi-Fi Interactive because the 1920s, they were a boom decade for automobiles. In 1921, 9.2 million cars were registered. But eight years later in 1929, that number had grown more than doubled to 23.1 million. And Ford didn't go public until the 1950s, so it was GM that hit the gas for the automobile industry on the New York Stock Exchange. Now, in 1921, GM was trading around $9.63 per share. You can see on your screen right there. And by 1925, that figure had grown to $22 per share, kept rising. It finally peaked at $111 in 1929. And by the end of the bull market, GM was worth $3.9 billion. And to give you an idea, idea of how much they increased production, in 1921, GM reported total, total car sales of 215,000. Seems pretty impressive for a startup back then. By 1929, it was selling 1.9 million automobiles annually. That's an increase of over 765% for that decade. Now, I've got to bring it current here, and this is going to be our vehicle heat map, mainly electric vehicle, but also the traditional automakers here. This is uh, what's happened today. Let's check out what's happened in the year that was here. A lot of the bigger players, especially the leg legacy players, looking at some nice games. Ford, by the way, up 135%. GM up 37%. You can see it's trading at $57.17 per share. Now, I do want to bring up a max chart because this only goes back to, I believe, 2011. That's because GM declared bankruptcy. They had to reorganize. And they finally got their ticker back a couple of years later. But that was early on in the global uh, pandemic, not global pandemic, global financial crisis. Mixing up my crises here. But back here <laughs> in good old 2021, despite a chip shortage causing supply issues, GM has had a pretty good year, topping earnings estimates for Q3 with total revenue of $26 billion. And of course, GM is still making cars, but unlike the 1920s, they're expanding their EV business. General Motors announced earlier this month that it is opening its third US-based factory uh, based on manufacturing EV batteries in Michigan. Zach. Yeah, that 500% increase over a century, Jared, just putting into context the 1,000% uh, returns for AMC investors who got in at the beginning of all this this year still Apples after it's come down. Yes. A century of gains versus a year, pretty wild. Just well, the stock went into again. bankruptcy, so you couldn't have traded the stock. It's kind of <laughs> like one of those things that, you know, Apple's Exactly. Doing. We do our best. Here. And there's still... <laughs> You know, it's weird though. There's still a lot of people calling for bankruptcy for AMC too. So you got you got that picture still kind of playing out here apples as well. Apples. We'll see. There you go. Well, it was a record year for SPACs in 2021. No shortage of names to highlight on that list when you think about more than $150 million brought in by those SPACs this year, according to SPAC Insider. And Jared, uh, taking a look back on some of those SPACs would reveal uh, some that haven't delivered uh, all that extraordinary returns, specifically when you look at some on that list, including Talkspace, uh, they're off by about 80 percent and Crunchbase just kind of put together a list of some of those, including Outlet, that have also followed in uh, those footsteps, not showing great returns. And of course, you know, it, it's brought a lot of attention back to the space when you think about the SEC and what they've done to crack down on SPACs in company disclosures choosing to go public that way via reverse merger rather than the traditional IPO route. And I'm not sure if bad returns by themselves are exactly reasons to really crack down on some of these companies, but uh, it's what we're highlighting here in looking back on those names. Yeah, I'll tell you what, there's a, a saying in trading that I really like, price 
precedes narrative. And the same thing uh, uh, goes to the regulatory space. The regulators are going to apply 2020 hindsight anytime they see an industry or a space where they're just seeing a lot of losses. And that's kind of what's happening this year. It's not specific to SPACs, by the way. Um, there are a lot of different industry groups. Um, if we go to the Wi-Fi interactive here, I'm going to pull up my leaders index. And um, this is something I look at to kind of gauge sentiment. I'm going to put a year-to-date view on so you can see. Now, up at the top, we got home builders. Those are up 47%. But I'm looking at the losers down at the bottom. KWeb, that's a Chinese internet ETF. China is its own story. So let's just put that out the window for now. Solar ETF, TAN, that's down 26%. ARK Innovation Fund down over 20 So is the cannabis EPS. ETF and even the IPO, the Renaissance IPO ETF, not performing that well. It's traded mainly sideways and now it's down 10% at the bottom end of its range. So I think the SPAC deals, SPACs are kind of like the second class citizens of new listings. You know, the IPOs and the direct listings, those tend to be at the top, but even those are having some problems. Um, I interviewed Kathy Donnelly from time to time, front of the program. She wrote the book on IPOs and how to trade them. 90% of IPOs are going to cut below their first day trading low sometime in their first year. And that applies to SPACs uh, with an even greater percentage. So um, there are some good ones out there. There are some bad ones. Uh, if you're just playing the industry as a whole, you're probably going to get burnt a little bit. But we have to see where the hot money flows in the new year because high value stocks, um, stocks trading with high multiples have gotten absolutely slammed in all market cap bases over the last couple months. No reason to think yeah. that SPACs are going to be immune. Yeah, I'm not sure if we can quickly pull up Jared on that interactive there, uh, boxed.com, uh, how they've been performing here since uh, we had uh, Tony Shea on the show talking about that too, because that was a SPAC that came out and, uh, you know, it's actually up still 30% since we chatted with him uh, about that debut, up by about 35%, I think, since then. Um, but But it's interesting to kind of go through some of these names uh, and look at their performance because, of course, as you said, there are still uh, plenty of IPOs that really haven't fared that well either. So clearly, uh, I guess, you know, reasons to really dive deeper into some of these disclosures, whether it's a SPAC or IPO. That's why we highlight these things on debut days. We get into the numbers, try and get investors the best picture.